Dan Roberts here in the FOS studio, and I've got Don Davis, the founder of PFL. Don, thanks for joining us. It's always great to talk fighting. Great to be back with you. So let's talk about the upcoming fight. Finally, Francis Ngannou, who you guys signed, I think, 2023. Yep. We've been waiting for the debut. Will debut as a PFL fighter. The fight is in Saudi Arabia. Talk to us about how much of a milestone this could be for PFL. Look, I think it's big for PFL, but it's also big for MMA fans. This is the biggest fight of 2024, and it's not from UFC, it's from PFL. Remember six years ago when I started the company, we had zero fans and zero fighters. If you would have told me that on October 19th, we'd have the biggest fight of MMA, great, great milestone. But you've got Francis Nagano, who left UFC to come to PFL, and he was the number one pound for pound fighter in the UFC champion, up against Francis, against La Problemo, Henan Ferreira, who's number five ranked by ESPN, not by us, and he's the biggest, fastest, hardest puncher. Six foot eight, does a backflip in the middle of the cage. So this is the predator against the problem, must see, but it's the best men's fight. Not at UFC, at PFL, but what's crazy, the best female fight is the co-main. Chris Cyborg, who everybody says is the GOAT, one loss in 18 years, and in four organizations, she's been a four-time champion in four different places, including the UFC. She's up against her toughest test in five years. Larissa Pachenko, who is the PFL champion, who beat Kayla Harrison, the only person to beat Kayla Harrison, who's now the face of UFC. So best men, best woman, battle the giants, October 19th. We're really proud, but MMA fans, we're really excited to give it to you. So, fight is in Saudi. Yep. Also, the Saudi PIF has invested yes. in, in the league. Uh, seeing a lot of this Saudi money come into U.S. sports. Uh, we also had a, recently a great story at Front Office Sports about even a U.S. college football program trying to get money from Saudi Arabia. One coach who decided to go out there didn't work out. But this trend is going to continue. Uh, what are the considerations that come into play when we talk about taking uh, foreign investment? Well, look, I think from the PFL side, there's only really two global sports, soccer and combat. Hmm. And when we wanted to have the best global investors, we went to the Mideast early. We started going there two and a half years ago to talk to investors. We had great U.S. investors. Ten sports team owners are investors in the PFL, as well as like Elysian Park, Legends, you know, Aries. We said, global company, global investors. Where is the new power central for global sports? The Mideast. So for us, win, win, win. Now on top of that, what we learned is their huge desire to be the next Las Vegas, the fight capital of the world. In the 1980s, where were all the biggest fights in boxing? Las Vegas. Where are all the biggest fights in boxing and MMA right now? Riyadh. So we have a great partner to build the company, but we also have a great partner to host the biggest events. We couldn't afford what we're putting on October 19th without their support. PIF and Surge, along with the Minister of Sports of Saudi Arabia, are underwriting this event. Dana White loves to talk about the sphere. Well, most of his 20 million went into those like historic movies. This is more than 20 million, and most of it's going into the fights on October 19th. And we couldn't do that without our partners. We talk a lot about the rising attention on investment in sports. We're talking right now about you know sovereign wealth funds. There's also just more private equity money pouring into leagues. In some ways, I imagine the considerations are different for you guys. It's not as delicate as, say, private equity investing in youth sports, which is something that's really happening increasingly at the college level. But suffice to say, I mean, PE pouring into both pro and amateur sports. Uh, what do you make of that trend? Well, look, I think what's been interesting for us is you've had the big four get most of the focus, you know, the big four yep. leagues. There's 156 teams, if you include MLS in that. I was just about to say, big five, I'm gonna, so you, MLS is going to call. If you include yeah. MLS, you, you've got 156 teams. 90% of their revenue is domestic, and their average growth rate of the big is 8%. So call it U.S., traditional, pretty mature. Mm -hmm. But that's been, that's been the main event of the focus. Where is the money going to go the next 10 years? Global growth. Global growth. So I think what you will see are sports like MMA and Upstarts. companies like PFL that, that are global in growth. 
And when you look at also business models, what differentiates the PFL from a team is we're a global sports company. There's only six in the world. F1, UFC, MotoGP, NASCAR, and Matchroom. What is a global sports company interesting? You control all your media rights. 50% of your revenue is outside the US and you can leverage and own all your IP. Well, if you're a team, none of those three are true. That's all happening at the league level. So for potential acquirers, they got no interest in a team unless it's an individual in the community. 10% of an NFL team, pretty appealing. Yeah, for an individual in a community. But if you're really an industrial buyer, if you're a private equity fund, if you're a sovereign wealth fund, if you're a global media company, and you want to leverage IP, you want to control media rights, you want to expand globally, what's the holy grail? A global sports company. Mm. And there's only six. And five of them are owned by somebody else. So PFL has been in a great position as the first new one in 30 years of that kind of category of global sports companies. Now, when you look at other industries, that's where I think the investment's going to go. Who owns IP? Who is global? Who can expand and grow? Those are the three things I think you'll look for. There was a phrase, if we talk about UFC, which has come up a lot, in either your marketing or maybe on the site or something I saw about PFL that said, you know, now is the co-leader in MMA. And I wanted to press you on that a little bit because certainly if you ask, uh, sometimes I call them normies, if you ask just yeah. a general sports fan who's not knee deep in the industry and, and this stuff day to day, if you ask them you know, about MMA, they might know UFC, they might know nothing. Yeah. But if they can name a big player in MMA, they probably only know UFC. So talk to me about kind of um, squeezing in there and trying to elbow your way to uh, a bigger brand name recognition for PFL. Very fair question. And and I want to answer that. I'm a serious business guy. You know, built two dozen companies to over a billion dollars. So I know where we are and where we're not. <laughs> so where are we not? Our brand is not on the level of UFC. Their brand's in college. Our brand's in middle school. We're six years out. They're year 30. They get 200 million of marketing money. We got zero. So if you ask a bunch of people in the Verizon store or Chick-fil-A, they're going to name UFC before they name PFL. So that's where we're not as a co-leader. Where are we as a co-leader? There are three things you would look at in terms of the NBA or MMA. Mm -hmm. You would look at athletes, distribution, and audience. Yep. Okay. Athletes, this is going to shock most people. There's only one company that does independent measurement of athletes. Now, of course, Don King in boxing would rank all his guys at the top, and so would Dana. Fight matrix rankings, independent. They rank wherever you fight in MMA, from 1 to 500 in your weight class. 30% of UFC's roster is top 25 ranked in the world. 30% of PFL's roster. So if you tune in Saturday night and watch UFC, and you tune in Friday night on ESPN and watch PFL, you're watching the exact same thing. It is Coke and Pepsi. Now, a lot of people would say, hey, I don't believe that. You know why? It's because of the brand point mm -hmm, that I just mm -hmm. gave you. Yep. Big head start on the brand, particularly in the United States. But athlete quality is the exact same today. Hmm. What? <laughs> That's never happened in sports. So it's almost like if you're a soccer fan, if you took the Bunza League and Serie A and La Liga and put them together, that's PFL. But they're still the Premier League. Okay. Now let's go to distribution. We're on ESPN, they're on ESPN. We're primetime, they're primetime. They're in 170 countries with 20 media partners. We're in 170 countries with 20 media partners. Exact same. What? Now let's go to audience. We're 50% of their viewership, linear and streaming both U.S. and worldwide. That's across the zone, ESPN Plus. Right. Wow. Hold on. You just said they have 200 million of marketing and every time I tune in ESPN, I see UFC everywhere and I don't see yep. PFL anywhere yet. And you're already 50% already? Good for you. Good for you. And we're growing 23% a year. They're growing 8% a year. So we're, we're on the rise. So yes, is our brand a co-leader? No. They're still Kleenex. <laughs> I give them that. But when it comes to the things that matter, call it the old Wendy's commercial, sizzle and beef, you know, I'm separating the beef of athletes, distribution, in terms of audience, we've accomplished something that's never been done. You really have two sports leagues that are pretty equal. This is not the NFL and the XFL. This is more like soccer, where we've taken those other soccer leagues and put them together, and, and they're still the Premier League. Maybe Nike versus On or Hoka. 
Yeah, if we put Hoka and On together. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's talk a little bit more about distribution because much like PE flooding into Swartz, yeah. it's another thread that we're constantly covering at FOS. Uh, the fragmentation, yep. sometimes I jokingly call it the great rebundling because after everything went to separate OTT platforms, suddenly we're seeing efforts to rebundle them. Uh, you know, there was this venue sports offering with yep. uh, Fox, WBD, and Disney. Maybe it won't happen now, but after all the cord cutting now, suddenly it's like, wait a minute, people are realizing I have to find this thing on ESPN Plus or DAZN. I've got this other thing that's on ESPN Linear. Maybe there will be an ESPN flagship app. This other thing is on NBC or Peacock. I remember NBC Gold Zone, all these different apps. So for you guys, as you said, I mean, one of the most important things for an upstart league, distribution, eyeballs, streaming. Um, how did you approach you know, your partners in that way and, and what would you hope to see happen in terms of reach? Yeah, I'll tell you what we're doing now and also tell you where I think the market's going, which I think for your viewers will be particularly interesting because I think the NBA story, which was talked about for two years, is going to be played out again with MMA, mm. and it hasn't been talked about yet. So where we are the last five years is we wanted that broad distribution. A lot of people say, go, T go DTC, go on your app, go on Twitch. Built too many companies to know, unless you are mainstream, yep. you're nothing. And unless you're paid media rights, you're not going to have a business. So where are we? Mainstream, that means linear and streaming. So if you go on ESPN, we're on ESPN main channel Friday nights and ESPN simulcast cannot do better distribution. So if you're an old person watching linear or you're a new person on plus only, you can see PFL both places. We were able to accomplish that same place about 50% of the territories around the world, those 170 countries. Sometimes we're only linear, sometimes we're only streaming, but in half the world, we're both. Big deal. Second thing is we didn't go anywhere where we weren't paid. 90% of the deals you see on TV, yep. they we'll don't get you, paid. We'll give you some of our matches we, or games. We, yep. Hey, man, time by, exposure. or we'll do an ad split, or we'll give you exposure. Mm -hmm. To get over the wall, meaning you get paid, is almost impossible. MLS didn't get paid for 20 years. Okay. We can't do that anymore. You'll run out of capital to build your company. We're the first media-paid company in new sports in year five in 170 countries ever. We were paid in 170 countries in year five. Never happened before. Now, some countries small, some countries medium, some countries bigger, but they all paid. So we're over the wall and we keep those deals to two years and they average a 2x increase. Great news. But where's this market going is the big business story that you guys will talk about, but nobody is yet. When UFC was last in the market, MMA had one bidder. One bidder, because MMA was not mainstream. MMA wasn't a must-have, and media companies did not know how MMA was going to perform. So the big guy only had one bidder. Fox, no bid, and they were the incumbent. And Ari Emanuel called Kevin Mayer and said, we're doing this deal. And everybody said Kevin Mayer did a terrible deal when mm -hmm. he was at Disney, and it's a brilliant deal. And everybody said, you've overpaid, and now the rest of the market wished they did ESPN's deal. And it's been the top performing sport for ESPN Plus for five years on a per dollar basis. And everybody wished they had that streaming deal. Well, now that deal's coming to market. And everybody who has a streaming asset is gonna bid. It's gonna be five bidders now for the UFC deal in January, 2025, five. Now, how does that affect you guys? You'll be watching closely, you know, who didn't get it? You who go. needs MMA from someone You go, else? man. I'm a big supporter, and in January 2026, PFL comes to market. So it's interesting because you're going to have five major bidders who said five years ago, MMA mm -hmm. niche, now MMA mass. MMA, I don't know how it's going to work. Now MMA, big, big, big Got deal. Uh, streaming, I'm not starting yet. Now streaming is my whole future. So UFC is going to have five big offers. It's going to be $8 billion over 10 years. And it's going to determine the winners and losers definitively of those streaming companies, because the NBA started it. And now we start to see some winners and losers off the NBA. Well, the end of that story is going to be MMA, because there's nothing coming for five years after MMA. You start to look at any major sport, it's not till the NFL reopens that anybody can do anything about it. That's five years away. Eight billion over 10 years, that's your number prediction? For 
Eight billion. You heard it here first. Eight billion for UFC. Their entire package will be eight hundred million a year. If you take their media plus their pay per view, remember they have fifty events a year. Interesting to compare that to the new WNBA deal. That's what I think it's going to be. Because remember they have fifty events a year, fifteen pay per view, mm -hmm. thirty five on media. It's going to be eight hundred million if they keep that whole package together. So then PFL will come along in January twenty twenty six, and some of those media companies will say, eight billion was too much for me. But what can I get? Yep. And can you're, I get in the MMA game? Can I get in MMA because it's a top performing sport for young people, and it's a growth sport, and you guys are half the audience, and you guys have a more innovative product, and the sports season format's pretty cool, where you win in advance, lose and go mm -hmm. home. Um, advertisers, I can sell that a little bit more easily, you know, with the whole season. Huh, professionals in your name, you're not as controversial, I like that. I like that. I can make money on that. And also, the winning bidder is going to bid for us also. Because what's ESPN doing? Own it. Yeah. It's the only sport you can own. If any media company could own all of college football, they right. would. If they could own all the NBA, they would. The only major sport you can own all is MMA because it's, it's a duopoly. There's only two providers, and there's only 80 events. After you guys acquired Bellator, which I want to ask about. Correct. So to me, that Consolidation of the, the fascinating MMA big, big story that hasn't been talked about and will get starting to talk about is what happens to MMA will determine what happens to at least two media companies' futures. Because whoever wins, good. Whoever loses, has got to sell their company. Because they don't have enough sports rights. Hmm. Let's talk about, in a broader sense, MMA being mainstream, as you say. It's mm -hmm. funny you just said less controversial mm -hmm. about PFL. You know, I, I'm a, a boxing fan, and I, I will admit I've, I've seen some MMA fights, not a ton. And it seems to me, you know, you face an obvious obstacle, and this is true for boxing yep. as well. These yep. combat sports, there's certain people who are probably never going to be interested in watching that stuff. Yep. You know, it, it's, there's the obvious of too violent, but maybe it's also the nature of the fights. Sometimes they're over in 10 seconds. Yep. I mean, that's when they go viral on Twitter and you see like what was supposed to be a great fight was over in a flash. How are you guys combating that? There's only so much that, that you can do, but how to reach and recruit new fans. Yeah, there's, there's two things positive about the sport of MMA, and then there's two things uniquely positive about PFL that's happened. The sport of MMA has changed in the last five years dramatically in terms of adoption. One, it's the youngest viewing, age 35. So as people want to get young demo, you know, everybody says the big five need to get younger. Already young. So one, if you want 35-year-old viewing demo, it's here, and people want that. Number two, most predisposed to streaming and mobile viewing because they're young, but also yep. the fight's 15 minutes. Grew up on it, too. The fight's 15 minutes, so I can snack every one of these fights. I grew up on it. So that is bullseye for where media is not where it was. So that's UFC and PFL. Now PFL specifically, two other positives. One, the sports season format, regular season playoff and championship, beginning, middle and end, great for advertisers. Because that's how they buy the NBA. That's how they buy the NFL. So you're not buying a one-off event. You're buying us for the season. So we have 24 advertisers this year. Half of them are not endemic and they haven't been in MMA before. Wow. Geico, Celsius Energy, the military. <laughs> Bows. So they're in sports, but they're new to combat sports mm -hmm. because of the sports season. The second thing is regarding, call it the broadening of the audience. Because of how we approach the sport, with professional being our name, more women have come in mm. into the viewing audience. It is still two thirds male, one third women, but the PFL skews two-thirds, one-third versus three-fourths, one-quarter, and that's growing in engagement. So I think as it regards advertisers and the future growth, PFL is on the sports side versus the combat side as, as you look at that audience. Got it. Well, October 19, Riyadh. Battle Kansas of the Giants. Yeah, let's go. All right, Don, thanks for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me here.